This is Josh Warner, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Turner Acryl Gouache. Um, this is some new gouache that I tried out. This Frankenstein piece right here, this uh, was created 100% using the Turner Acryl Gouache uh, that I got from jerrysartaround.com. And this art was actually a job for Caliber Comics that was used on the cover of the graphic novel Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus based on Mary Shelley's novel. And this will be part one of a four-part series, so watch all four videos, because in part one, I'm going to cover the Turner Acryl Gouache regular line of paints, the colors that I used in this piece. And then for part two, I am going to cover their metallics, which I used in some of the metals that you see in this piece. And uh, that was some very, very fun stuff, some really nice paint. And then uh, at part three will be the pearl interference colors, which are really unique, and you'll see why. Part four, is the color pearl line that they have, which is a series of really rich pearlescent colors. Very beautiful. So here we go. Let's look at, take a close look at me using the regular Turner Acryl gouache line. Here you can see uh, exactly what the tubes look like. These are the smaller tubes from Turner. And I will uh, run through the colors that I got here. So. I wanted to use sepia. Um, you can see it's a nice dark brown, very uh, very opaque. The crimson, uh, really rich, deep, beautiful red, um, also very opaque. You can see it got a little bit more transparent as I went out to the sides there. Um, the grayish brown uh, has a nice, thick, opaque matte color, um, very versatile. Um, the burnt sienna is another one that you can kind of get more of a watercolor look with if you thin it down a little bit. This is a uh, barrel green, which is a really fun color, which I used for some of the lighting coming off of some of the stuff in the laboratory. Raw umber, really nice brown. You can see, it. look at how diverse that color is. It gets really thin uh, and transparent, similar to a watercolor, uh, the more that you dilute it. And there's the white, which you can see uh, acts nice and opaque. So as you can see here, there is the Frankenstein piece. Um, at this point, it's mostly just inks that you're looking at. And I'm starting to lay in um, some of these Turner Acrylic Wash colors in nice thin washes to get started. Now I know that this is a more of an opaque paint, but I wanted to start kind of light and get a feel for them because I've never used these, this uh, particular brand before. And so far so good. I'm finding that I can kind of do some thin glazing with it and start laying things in, which builds up a little more confidence to start um, uh, diluting them less and using them a bit more opaquely. So in case you're not familiar with gouache, um, gouache is similar to watercolor in that it's extremely fluid, uh, very nice and water soluble. Um, but you, it, you have all the benefits of acrylic paint in that you can layer them nicely, you can uh, get a nice opaque um, color, but you have a nice dry matte finish when it dries. It's extremely matte without having that plasticky, shiny look that acrylic paints give you. Now the nice part about these, this is an acrylic gouache, uh, which means it's an acrylic paint, it's a type of acrylic paint, but it contains an additive that gives it this fluidity and this nice matte finish, uh, similar to watercolors. It's highly pigmented, so you get some really true rich stuff. This is extremely nice. I was, um, I was very pleased. You get instant pigment, you don't have to use much paint, um, so a little goes a long way. These, th these smaller tubes that I'm using here can uh, they have a lot of life left. I can do quite a bit more pieces with them. One of the nice things about uh, this is that they're going to be a little gentler on your brushes than regular acrylic paints as well. You don't have to thin them as much as you would acrylic paints. Uh, they're, they're water soluble obviously when they're wet. So you can do some blending right there on the surface while they're wet, but once they dry they become water resistant in a similar fashion to acrylics. This is nice because it means you can layer right over top of them and the, you don't have to worry about the water picking up the color underneath. So if I want to do a nice opaque color over top of a base, 
I don't have any issues with that at all, even if it's a completely contrasting color. Obviously, you want to keep your brushes clean, make sure that the previous color's off your brush, make sure that it's, you're getting exactly what you want. But if you want to do some blending right there on the surface, you can. Everything's still nice and water soluble while it's wet. Um, and it takes about five minutes to dry, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how much water you use. If there's quite a bit of water, it might take up to 10 minutes. But, um, but once it's dry, you, it's amazing. You just like acrylics, you can paint right over top of them again. You can see here I'm using some of the, um, the grayish brown. I wanted to give him this grayish brown base. Obviously we're used to kind of some of the more cartoony Frankenstein characters we've seen being green. Uh, this doesn't actually make much sense, right? So we're, we're building a corpse here. We've got corpse parts and uh, we're building our monster through all these kind of stitch pieces together. I figured I would instead give him this kind of uh, grayish brown base using the grayish brown Turner Acrylic Gouache as the main color. And from there, when I want to warm it up a little bit, I can use burnt sienna. Um, raw umber gives me a nice uh, richer brown, not quite as dull as the grayish brown which that I can use for some of the wood. There's a lot of wood in this piece as well. And then to get that kind of traditional green look that we're used to associating with the character, I'm instead going to use that color as reflective light coming from some of the machinery in the laboratory. So I've got all of these things, sparks shooting and electricity and lights, and they're, sh they're shooting a green cast over the monster. So I figured that would be kind of a nice little nod to that green look we're, we're used to associating with him while still being a little bit more realistic with it. And here you can, you, you can see the, uh, the raw umber at work. I'm using it nice and opaque now that I've got that wash down. I'm using really nice opaque streaks to get that wood grain. And it's working quite well. I'm enjoying it. You can see that I can thin it down beautifully to get this fun wash effect. It gives me lots of diversity in uh, one single tube of paint. Here it is with a little more diluted to build up my shadows. Now there, obviously, the light's going to cast a heavier shadow, so I'm going a little more opaque. And uh, I'm having fun with it. E even with a very limited palette, I'm getting a nice range of values. Another thing to mention here is that these, um, because these are acrylic gouache paints, they will adhere to almost any surface. You could actually use this paint on rocks, uh, metal, uh, obviously paper, uh, which is what I'm doing here. This is on Bristol. Um, you could also do it on canvas, uh, wood, glass, uh, pretty much any surface. Uh, so it's pretty incredible. You can get that matte look. You can thin it to get that kind of watercolor look. And, uh, and you, yet you don't have to uh, limit yourself uh, to what you're painting on. So it really kind of opens the door for a lot. One of the things, too, I want to note here, now that we're kind of really getting into some of the more colorful look, is that there's very little color shift, I found, when, uh, when it dries. So that is really nice. Um, one of the things that bothers me about some acrylic paints is that there's a lot of color shift. It ends up drying much darker than it looks while you're painting, and you end up having to remix and go back over it. But I found with these, that was not the case everything looked pretty much the same color as when I laid it down when it was wet. So thanks. Um, you got to see a little bit of it in action. And uh, next video, we'll go into the metallics. Uh, overall, I'm loving these. Thanks so much for your time and for watching this.